Good morning, everybody. Today's uh, August 18th, and uh, here's a quick COVID update. Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who is anti-mask, um, I won't say he's anti-vaccine, but he tested positive for COVID yesterday. He's been vaccinated since December, so he's a breakthrough case. Uh, he's pretty mild um, so far, from what I understand, no symptoms. But interestingly enough, yeah, even though he has no symptoms, they went ahead and uh, treated him with monoclonal antibodies, Regeneron. I think that's probably due to his age and the fact that he's a very important person, governor of Texas. Um, but it just proves the efficacy of the vaccine, which is, you know, positive, but um, no, no real symptoms. So, so hopefully he'll make a speedy recovery. Um, and we'll see if it motivates more people to get vaccinated. I'm not sure it will. Um, the United States is expected to approve a third vaccine booster shot for uh, everybody. And there's debate around this. And let me give you my opinions on it real quick. Um, well, first of all, Dr. V, will you, will you take it? I have to wait and see because it's eight months after your second dose. My second dose was in May. So um, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't need to take the booster shot until January. And this might be a whole different pandemic come January. That'll be after you know holiday surge, travel season. We'll see what happens. And if there's a different variant, let's say Lambda takes off, um, I might want to uh, get that booster. Now, if, if the if the pandemic is still mostly one of Delta and I haven't caught it up to this point, uh, I probably won't get a booster. Now, I would probably recommend someone who's older, who has medical conditions. Um, I would definitely uh, recommend that, that they get a booster shot. Uh, by booster, they are talking about a third dose of the same uh, vaccine, uh, Moderna or Pfizer that you got previously. What about J&J? The, they're currently looking at that. Um, and obviously the J&J is a single dose. So they would recommend a second dose of the J&J, which I think they probably will, given the number of breakthrough infections we're seeing with J&J, which is, um, as you know, uh, less effective, but still very effective in terms of keeping you uh, out of the hospital. Um, but we have a bigger philosophical question, which is, uh, you know, should we be administering third doses when most of the world has not even gotten one dose? And as you know, this is a global pandemic, so this won't go away unless we all take care of each other. Now, I'm in Houston. Currently, Texas is about to experience. You guys are about to learn all you need to know about Texas because it's going to be all over the news, you know. Uh, two weeks ago, I said it was Louisiana, and then last week, I said it was going to be Florida, which it is, and this week, uh, I said it's going to be Texas, and next week, it'll be California, and you guys are already hearing about 600 patients in Houston who can't get hospital beds, you know, no pediatric ICUs in Dallas, so he, Texas is making the rounds in the news, and the numbers are not looking great. Houston's of over 2,000 cases a day. But more shocking than that is what's happening up in the eastern seaboard. It is going up a lot faster than I would have predicted. And so much so that New York City is almost to 2,000 cases a day on average. And, you know, New York City, New Jersey, the most populated, densely populated state is New Jersey. So people are really packed in there. So that might be the next area of uh, really serious concern. Uh, now, New Jersey is 60% vaccinated, unlike Texas, which is only about 47% vaccinated, not even 50%. I mean, it is shocking. Even in Houston, it is only about 50% vaccinated rate. So out of a whole territory of 7 million people, 3.5 million people are not vaccinated here in Houston. I think I will wear my mask. And um, remember, this is a different pandemic than last year with this Delta variant. So 
you know, I really encourage people to not use their experiences from last year. Oh, I had COVID last year. I don't need vaccination. Um, <laughs> yes, you do. And a newer study actually showed that people who who recovered from COVID last year and who gets one dose of the vaccine has higher levels of antibodies than someone who did not have COVID and got both doses. So that should be encouraging. So if you survived COVID last year, good, get vaccinated because your protection will probably be even higher than people who didn't have it, which always baffled me why people would go, nah, that's okay. I already had it. I don't need it. I, I, I'll have my natural immunity. Like, well, why would, okay, God bless you. You know, even though vaccine, it's all natural immunity, right? So vaccine, it's not like vaccination doesn't, doesn't do some other crazy science driven sci-fi immunity. I mean, vaccination also uses your natural immunity without the risk of actually getting sick, without the risk of actually possibly dying. Um, but that's lost on people. And, and the, the rational, I don't understand the rationalization. You know, I already had COVID, I don't need a vaccine. Well, if you had COVID and you survived it and you get one dose of the vaccine, you actually have higher levels of antibodies than someone who didn't, which for me would encourage me to get vaccinated. So we shall see, you know, um, what's gonna happen with this third, third booster dose. Uh, but maybe we should encourage those who are unvaccinated to get vaccinated more. Uh, yesterday, I talked about how, and I don't think I made my point really well, about why monoclonal antibody, mobile monoclonal antibody clinics is a stupid idea. And instead of promoting that, they should promote a mobile vaccination clinic. You know, go get vaccinated. And remember, one shot doesn't do it. And, and one shot doesn't give you automatic immunity. And that's the other thing too, I'm rambling a little bit here, but these, I, this idea of, um, I saw this uh, article about like the Las Vegas Raiders football team here in the United States. They're either gonna require proof of vaccination or you can get a free vaccine shot if you wanna go to the game. Which I started wondering if you get one shot are they going to let you in that day? Because you realize you're not protected, right? Like, that makes no sense. Oh, I'm not vaccinated, but give me one shot and I'll go in and watch the football game or the, you know, whatever it is. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Here in Houston, they're, they're offering people $100 to get vaccinated, which we know incentives like that don't work. You're burning your hundred bucks. You'd, I'd rather see you give $100 to Texas Children's Hospital, <laughs> you know. For everybody who gets vaccinated, we will donate $100 to Texas Children's Hospital. Would actually be better than giving it to one person. Because um, quite honestly, if someone is vaccine hesitant, and comment if you disagree with me, but I think if someone is vaccine hesitant, there is no way they're going to change their minds because you offer them 100 bucks. You know what I'm saying? It's craziness. Well, uh, the numbers are not looking great. We're gonna be in this for a while and watch out Eastern Seaboard, we're in trouble. And lastly, remember it is a brand new pandemic and I'll be back again tomorrow with another update.